Uh, yeah, I'm super excited to be here today. Um, Netflix is a huge fan of testing and production. Uh, we do it through chaos engineering. Um, and we recently renamed our team to resilience engineering because while we do chaos engineering too, still um, chaos engineering is one means to an end to get you to that overall resilience story. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, our goal as a team is to improve, vulner or improve availability by proactively finding vulnerabilities and services. Um, and we do that by experimenting on the production system. Our team has an active belief, belief that there are a certain class of vulnerabilities and issues that you can only find with live production traffic. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we do that today. Uh, first and foremost, our main focuses with testing and production are safety and monitoring. Um, you really can't have great testing and production unless you have these things in place. And testing and production can seem really scary. And if it does seem scary in your company, you should listen to that voice <laughs> and, and figure out why it seems scary. Um, you know, it might be because you don't have a good safety story. It might be because you don't have a good observability story. Um, so we really focus on, on these two worlds within Netflix and within our tools. Um, so to define chaos engineering just in a simple sentence, it's um, the discipline of experimenting on production uh, to find vulnerabilities in the system before they render it unusable for your customers. Um, so we do this at Netflix through a tool that we call CHAP which stands for Chaos Automation Platform. Um, so CHAP can ca uh, catch vulnerabilities, and it allows uh, users to inject failures into services and prod that validate their assumptions about those services before they become full-blown outages. So I'm going to take you through how it works at a high level. This is a a hypothetical set of microservice dependencies. Um, there's a proxy. It sends requests to service A, which fans out um, to service B, C, and D. And then there's also a persistence layer. So service D talks to Cassandra, and then service B talks to a cache. So I went ahead and, cond and condensed this because it's about to get busy in a second. If we want to see if, so we want to see if service D is resilient to the failure of a cache. So the user goes into the CHAP interface, and they select service D as a service that will observe the failures in the cache as the service that fails. So CHAP will actually go ahead and clone service B into two replicas. Um, we refer to them as the control and the experiment clusters, and it kind of works you know, like A-B testing or like a sticky canary. Um, so these are much smaller in size than service B. We only route a very, very small percentage of customers into these clusters because obviously we want to contain the blast radius. Uh, we calculate that percentage based on the current number of users currently streaming, currently using the service. So it will then instruct our failure injection testing to tag these requests that match our criteria. Um, it does this by adding information to the header of that request. So it creates two sets of tags. Um, one set will have instructions to, uh, to both fail and be routed to the canary, and then the other will have instructions just to be routed to the control. Um, so when the RPC client in service A sees that the instruction in the instructions that it needs to route a request, it will actually send them to the control or the experiment cluster. Um, and then once failure injection testing uh, in the RPC layer of the experiment cluster sees that the request has been tagged for failure, uh, it will then return the failed response. Um, as before, the experiment cluster will see that as a failed response from the cache, it will execute the code to then handle a failure. And so we're doing this with the assumption that this is resilient to failure, right? Um, but what we see sometimes is that that's not always the case. Um, for the point of view of service A, it looks like everything is actually behaving normally. So how do we monitor this while these chaos experiments are running? Because it has the potential to go, to go very poorly. Um, when Netflix started our chaos engineering story, we didn't have good gates in place. You know, we would kind of run a failure experiment, cross our fingers, and then all sit in a war room watching the graphs and making <laughs> sure that nothing actually, actually went incorrectly. Uh, now we have much more of a safety focus. 
So we look at a lot of our key business metrics at Netflix. Uh, one of our key business metrics is what we call SPS, or stream starts per second. So if you think about what is the most important thing to the business of Netflix, it's that a customer can watch Friends or The Office or whatever they want to watch whenever they want to watch it. Um, so what you see in these graphs here are um, an actual experiment, and uh, it shows the SPS difference between the baseline, uh, between the experiment and control during a chaos experiment. So you can see here that these are deviating a lot from each other, which shouldn't be the case because there's the same percentage of traffic routed to both clusters. So because of that, the experiment will see, the experiment will use automated canary analysis and see, wow, these deviated really far from each other. I'm going to short the experiment. I'm going to stop failing these requests for the customer, and they'll have a normal experience. So from a customer perspective, it's more seen as you know, a blip um, when something like this happens. So we have a bunch of other protections in place as well. Uh, we limit the amount of traffic that's impacted in each region, so we're not you know, just uh, only doing experiments in U.S. West too. We're doing them all over the place and, and not letting it, limiting the amount of experiments that can run in a region at a time. Uh, we're only running during business hours, so we're not paging engineers and waking them up uh, if something goes if something goes wrong. Um, if a test fails, it can actually not be automatically run again or picked up by anyone until someone actually explicitly manually resolves it and acknowledges, hey, I know this failed, but it's, you know, I fixed whatever needed to be fixed. Um, we also have the ability to apply custom fast properties to clusters, um, which is helpful if your service is sharded, which a lot of services are at Netflix. Um, additionally, um, and I don't have this as a bullet point, we also have the ability to uh, fail based on device. So if we're assuming that Apple or a certain type of television is having a bunch of issues, we can uh, limit it to that device specifically and see you know, if, if that issue is widespread across that device. CHAP has found a lot of vulnerabilities. Um, here are some examples. So this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, the user says, we ran a CHAP experiment which verifies the service's fallback path works which was crucial for our availability. And it successfully caught an issue in the fallback path, and the issue was resolved before it resulted in an availability incident. Um, this was a really interesting one, because this fallback path wasn't getting executed a lot. So the user didn't actually know if it was working properly. And we were able to simulate, we, we were able to actually make it fail and see if it went to the fallback path and the fallback path worked properly. Um, so in this case, the user kind of thought their service was, was non-critical or, or tier two or whatever you label it as, but really it actually was a critical service. Um, here's another example. We ran an experiment to reproduce a sign-up flow fallback issue that happened with certain deploys and intermittently at night. So something kind of weird was happening with their service. Uh, we were able to reproduce the issue by injecting 500 milliseconds of latency. By doing the experiment, we were able to find the issues in the log file that was uploaded to the big data portal. This helped build context into why signup fallback experience is served during certain pushes. So that fallback experiment experience kept happening, but these users didn't know why. And they actually ran a CHAP experiment to, to see when it was happening, to see why it was happening. Um, so to set up CHAP experiments, there's a lot of things the user needs to go through. Uh, it needs to, uh, they need to figure out what injection points they can use. So our teams had to decide if they wanted failure or latency. So these are all of our injection points. You can fail uh, Cassandra, Hystrix, which is our fallback layer, RPC service, RPC client, S3, SQS, or, um, or cache. Or they can add latency. Um, or you can add both. And you can actually come up with combos of different experiments. And so what would happen is we would meet with service teams, and we'd sit in a room together, and we'd try to come up with a good experiment. And it would take a really long time. And so when we are setting up the experiment too, you have to decide your ACA configurations or your automatic canary configurations. Um, so we had some canned ACAs to aid setup. We had a CHAP SPS one. 
We had one that looked at system metrics. We had one that looked at um, RPS successes and failures. We had one that looked at whether our service was actually working properly and injecting failures. Um, and we learned that experiment creation can be really, really time consuming. And it was. Um, and so not a lot of experiments were getting created. Um, and and it, it was hard to, for a human to actually hold all the things in their head that, that made a good experiment. So um, we decided to automate some of this from CHAP. Um, so we were looking at different things like who was calling who. We were looking at timeout files. We were looking at retries. And we figured out that all of that information was in a lot of different places. So we decided to aggregate it. We zoomed into CHAP and we got cute and we, we gave it a monocle. Uh, and the monocle provides crucial optics on services. So this is what monocle looks like. Um, so it has the ability for someone to look up their, their app in their cluster and they can see all this information in one place. They, so each row represents a dependency. And this dependency is what feeds into chaos experiments. Um, so we were using this to come up with experiments, but what we didn't realize was this information was actually useful to just have in one place as well. So that was an interesting side effect. Um, and so users can come here and actually see if there are anti-patterns associated with their service, like if they had a dependency that was not supposed to be critical but didn't have a fallback, like obviously it was critical now. People could see timeout discrepancies. People could see retry discrepancies. Um, so we use this information to score a certain type of experiment's criticality and fed that into an algorithm that determined prioritization. Um, so each row, can act, each row represents a dependency and they can actually expand the rows. Um, so here's an interesting example. That blue line represents someone's timeout and, and the purple line represents how much time it was actually taking most of the time. So you can see it is very, very far away from the timeout. But a lot of this information wasn't readily accessible. So what would happen if we did a chaos experiment just under the timeout? You know, it, is, is that going to pass? It, it never executes that high. So it's, a, it's an interesting question. So we're, we're trying to provide this level of detail to users before these chaos experiments get run to give them the opportunity to say, wait, this doesn't look right. Um, so I'm going to play a little game. I, I know a lot of you don't have context on the Netflix ecosystem, um, but there is a vulnerability in this service, and I want to see if you can spot it. Um, so, so take a second to look at it. So to give you some context, sample remote Hystrix command wraps both the sample rest client and the sample rest client dot get. Uh, the history timeout is set to 500 milliseconds. So sample rest client .get has a timeout of 200 with one retry. And this is fine because it's a total of 400 milliseconds uh, with exponential back off, which is within that history limit. Uh, the sample retry client has timeouts of 100 and 600 with one retry. In this case, the retry might not have a chance to complete given the surrounding Hystrix wrapper timeout, which means that Hystrix abandons the request before the RPC has a chance to return. Um, so that's, that's where the vulnerability lies. Um, and so we're actually providing this information to users. And, and what's interesting is a lot of this logic lies in different places. So they weren't able to have this, this level of, of insight before. Um, so those were okay, and then these, this is where the, the vulnerability lies. So why did this happen? So it's easy for a team to just go in and, be, and look at their config file and just you know, change this around, right? But we want to figure out why this happened. Um, so we can change the timeout, but who's to say this won't happen again? Um, so we also help with figuring out why these things happen. Engineers weren't making bad choices. It was just a lot of things to update at once. Um, and so that's something to be learned as well. Uh, so we use Monocle for automated, automatic experiment creation as well. A user creates an experiment based on infactorial types of inputs. Um, so we take all these things and we, we're working to automate the creation of running these experiments uh, so that users don't have to. 
we're automatically creating and prioritizing latency failure and latency causing failure um, RPC and hysterics experiments. Um, ACA configs are added by default, uh, the deviation configurations. So we have SPS, system metrics, request statistics, and experiments are automatically run as well. Um, prioritizing experiments are also created. So I'll go through the algorithm for that at a high level. Uh, we use the RPS uh, stats range bucket. We use the number of retries and the number of hysterix commands associated with it. Um, so these are all weighted appropriately. Something else we also take into account is the number of commands without fallbacks and any curated impacts that a customer adds to their dependency. So curated impacts is this has a known impact on login, this has a known impact on sign up, this has a known impact on SPS. And we actually weigh those negatively and don't create, uh, don't run the experiment if you know the score is negative. Um, test cases are then ranked and run according to their criticality score. The higher the score, the sooner it's run, the more often it's run. Um, ironically enough, Monocle has given us some feedback that allows us to run less experiments in production, right? It's ended up as a feedback loop because we've been running so many experiments. We've seen patterns in between them where we can look at certain configuration files now and see certain anti-patterns and know that that's actually going to cause a failure, whereas we didn't know that information before. Um, it has led to new safety. So before... Um, if an experiment failed, it needed to be marked as resolved. Uh, well, currently it needs to be marked as resolved before it can run again. Um, but now we can add explicitly add curated impacts to a dependency. So a user can go into their monocle and actually add, this has a known login impact, this has a known SPS impact. And we're working on a feedback loop to where it fails, it will add a curated impact as well. Um, the runner will not run experiments with known impacts. So in summary, CHAP's monocle um, is crucial optics in one place, automatically generated experiments, automatically prioritized experiments, and finding vulnerabilities before they become full-blown outages. Um, if I can leave you with one tangent, one side piece of advice, it's to remember why you're doing chaos experiments and why you're testing in production. It's to you know, understand how customers are using your service and, and not lose sight of them. You want them to have the best experience possible. So monitoring and safety are of utmost importance uh, in these situations, like at Netflix, not being able to stream a video. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>